day all. Ready for another round. Alrighty, so we went through the 8086 register set and now we're going to see what happened in 1985 when the 386 slash 486 oops, register set hit us. So this was the first big change since the 8086 was in 1985. Um, 386 and 486 are what's called 32-bit CPUs, so the 8086 that we looked at last time was um, only a 16-bit CPU. All of its general purpose registers were 16 bits, but um, in the 386 and 486 they've been extended to 32 bits. So this is what they look like. For a start we've got EAX, EBX, ECX, EDX, ESI, EDI, EBP, and ESP. Um, okay, so you'll notice that these are these are the same. We have um, AX, BX, CX, and DX, but they've got an E on the top of them, on the front of them, and same with these: ESI, EDI, EBP, and ESP. So all that's happened is that the 16-bit registers of the 8086 have now been extended to 32 bits. So EAX still has um, AX and EBX still has BX, ECX still has CX, but we've also got um, a 32-bit version. So the whole thing is called EAX, that's uh, EAX here, and the low 16 bits of EAX are our old friend AX. That's for um, backwards compatibility, see? So you can still use AX, the 16-bit register, or you can up the ante and use EAX if you need a few extra bits for whatever you're doing. Um, obviously AX was um, AL and AH in the 8086 and that's still the case. We've still got access to AL, AH, we've got AX and now we've got EAX, the 32-bit version. Alrighty, so these ones down here, um, Source Index and Destination Index, uh, all of these actually have got the 16-bit uh, version as well. So you know, uh, ESI, the extra segment index, extra segment, settle down, it's um, <laughs> extra source index, rather, um, still has um, SI, the original 16-bit register. So this whole thing here is 32 bits, and AX, as we know, is 16 bits, and each of these is 8 bits, SI is 16 bits, but ESI is 32 bits. Alrighty, so 386 and 486 are called 32-bit processors. Um, you might you might notice that ESI doesn't have the byte versions. There's no byte version of uh, ESI, EDI, EBP, or ESP. Later on we get to that, but um, in the 386 and 486, I think, anyway, there's no byte version. Okay, there's also um, segment pointers. We've got FS, these are just general purpose segment pointers, and GS, two new 16-bit segment pointers. To add to the others, what were the others? CS, the code segment, the data segment, the stack segment, and the extra segment. Um, these are all 16 bits. Yeah, they 16 bits. All right. Um, last time, last time I forgot to tell you guys about um, <coughs> a very important register called the IP, which is short for instruction pointer. Let's go over this. IP is the instruction pointer. Okay, so IP is the instruction pointer in. Um, 32-bit, or uh, 386 and 486, it's been extended to EIP, which is the uh, extra instruction pointer, I guess. But um, the instruction pointer is, um, it's a number that points to the next instruction that the CPU is going to execute. So if you've got your code, and maybe it's got uh, assembly instructions like this, one after another, these are all assembly instructions. Obviously.
obviously don't try and type that. But um, so the IP might point here. Then when that instruction completes, it'll point here. Then it'll point here. Um, naturally, the IP just counts up. So um, well, if this is low RAM up here, so that's that's a low part in RAM, and this is a high part in RAM, and this whole thing is um, your program loaded in RAM. The IP counts. Well, I say up, but I've drawn a down arrow. I mean, it counts up in, um, you know, in RAM. Um, you can't move data into the IP with a MOV statement. So something like MOV IP40. No, that's not going to work. Not going to work at all. But um, if you want to move data into an IP statement, if you think about it, the um, jump command, we haven't been through what the jump command does, but it's the same as go to in basic. I don't know if you guys have done basic, but um, same as go to. C++ has go to as well. If you say jump to um, a, a label, so say one of these things here is um, my label, like that. To make a label you just put a name and then a colon. If you say jump my label, it's exactly the same as mov ip my label. Alright, so mov and jump, you know, they're the same thing, but um, jumps for ip. Also, when you call a function with um, the call command, you've actually um, change the IP as well. And then again, when you return from a function with the ret command, you're um, popping the IP from the stack so that you get your uh, IP back to where it was before it called the function. So um, anyway, the IP in conjunction with the CS, the code segment pointer, points to the next instruction for the CPU to execute. And finally, I'm not going to go into details here because this is a really strange register, but um, I forgot to mention it in the last tutorial. We also have something called the flags register, and uh, we use this to um, make decisions. So, um, Yeah, we'll go through that when we're looking at the compare command, and um, we'll talk more about jumps, obviously, later. But, um, yeah, that's the um, 80386 and 80486 register sets. Thank you for listening.